I've been asked countless times to explain the greatest mystery of the universe um, so simply that it could fit into a child's book. Unfortunately, as is the case, uh, what is uh, most simple in the universe is not simplex to explain. Um, what magnetism is, obviously, is that which props up and gives volume to 100% of uh, the cosmos etitos, or the phenomenal universe, be it on the macro scale or on the micro scale. 100% um, of the volume of any atom, whatever that may be, from hydrogen all the way through you know, uranium and plutonium and further on, is propped up by magnetism. That which gives definitional volume to the entire universe is unquestionably so magnetism. So what is magnetism? Faraday said that magnetism was the dielectric field. Um, alas, and unfortunately, he was the last person to ever get close to what magnetism was. Tesla himself never denotated what magnetism was. Um, I made a discovery uh, a few years ago, uh, a formula for uh, uncovering what magnetism was, and uh, I've been trying to prove myself wrong ever since, including uh, inquiring some of the finest minds on magnetism, and no one has been able to refute this. All models of magnetism, including the Lamour frequency of geomagnetic precession, all confirm my discovery. As I found out later, an invention called the ferrocell, invented by uh, a friend of mine now named Tim Vanderelli, a very, very simplex device, proves this. Mother Nature is extremely simple, and uh, denotatively everything is reducible to force and motion and inertia and acceleration. Let me give you an illustration of what magnetism is. At first you will find it very complex, but if you're able to imagine it in your mind and understand non-Euclidean geometry and projective geometry, you will understand what magnetism is. Let's first take a look at this uh, very simplex illustration. Now this is a hypertrochoid. Most people would consider it to be a spirograph pattern. But how is this actually extrapolated? The loss of inertia denotates uh, spatial divergence, not into space, but not uh, into space, but as creating space. Now let me first show you a simplex extrapolation here. Let me clear that out since this is hard to draw on a computer. Okay, now as I diverge from the non-Euclidean point, I have inverse projection along entire uh, circumference of the non-Euclidean point. This would be the dielectric point. You have to imagine this in three dimensions. Since magnetism is a reciprocating processional hyperboloid, now let's actually extrapolate out magnetism in full. As it's tough to draw on a computer, you'll have to imagine this in perfection. Okay. Now we're going to have to create there we go. Now we have the centrifugal and the centripetal point of divergence and convergence of a magnet. This actually extrapolates out the linear boundary of the physical magnet. Now what denotates a magnet is nothing other than field coherency. We talk about aligned domains, and obviously this is well known, but the explanation for same is what defines field coherency versus uh, incohit field coherency, i.e. Uh, respective to aligned domains versus uh, non-aligned domains or inchoit uh, field coherency isn't understood. Now, here's the hypertrochoidal pattern. As is necessarily the case, magnetism is a reciprocating processional hyperboloid. Now, superficially, this seems extremely complex, but first we have to understand a premise and limited human understanding as so far as Mother Nature. I'm trying to make this really simple, and unfortunately, in trying to explain things very simple, uh, things become rather hard. Now, this is how a human being draws a line. Now, bear with me. This is how a human being draws a line. We start at a point, and we end with a line, no matter what direction we go in. Now, there's no such thing as a point, and there's no such thing as a line. For me to make a point, I first have to make a line to start a point, and I cannot make a line without a point. Reductively so in field theory, there's no such thing as a point or a line. There's only a point line. Now, this is how a human extrapolates out a line, but Mother Nature does not make lines this way. This would be the uh, non-Euclidean point, for lack of a better term, of Mother Nature. But Mother Nature only makes lines like this. This is the point 
of inertia. And these two inverse points are the point of divergence. This is the only line that Mother Nature knows. For every action, there is equal opposite reaction. We all know that retroductively is the case, necessitatively so. So this is the only line that Mother Nature knows. But there are no straight lines in the universe. Everything is curvilinear. Absolutely everything in the universe is curvilinear. There is no exception to this. This is necessitatively the extrapolation of magnetism, the reciprocating precessional hyperboloid. Bear with me for a second, and I will help you understand this. This is the ferro cell. I made a discovery on uh, the nature of uh, the extrapolation of magnetism. This is uh, one of my formulas. Uh, and the other one involves the Lamour frequency of geomagnetic precession. Now you're asking yourself, well, what is uh, geomagnetic precession? We know, obviously, the Earth processes. This is the easiest way to think of precession. It's also known as Lamour frequency. This is a hyperboloid. This is marked as a double cone, but this entire formation is a hyperboloid. Now, you can actually see this under magnetic viewing film or underneath the ferro cell. This is the midpoint in any magnet at which polarity diverges. This is the point of non-Euclidean geometry where inertia is lost and the quote-unquote dielectric field is projected. So we not only have this two-dimensional hyperboloid, but we also must necessitatively have precession. Now, precession has to be known uh, actually for the creation of uh, MRI machines. It is known as uh, the Lamour frequency. Here is the uh, 42.5 degree precession uh, in, uh, in Tesla's of, uh, of a geomagnetic precession, which oddly enough, well it's not odd, occurs at a ratio of 1 to 5. Uh, this formula um, is my discovery for the extrapolation of uh, any magnetic force given equal, excuse me, given perfect even um, uh, uh, Gaussian flux density throughout the object. Now a magnet obviously is irrelevant whether it's conical shaped or spherical or cube or it doesn't matter. Given equal Gaussian flux density, this is the only way, like simplex fluid dynamics, at which magnetism can extrapolate itself. Now, here is my buddy's invention called the ferro cell. It is ingeniously simple to a fault. You have two uh, super optically flat disks that are cemented together, in between which is sandwiched a uh, a uh, layer of uh, special uh, ferrofluid that is less than a micron thin and it is ringed with a, a set of LEDs that are shooting inwards. It doesn't matter what color they are, it doesn't matter if it's one LED or a hundred of them. And of course the LEDs, just regular hardware LEDs, just plugged into the wall. And this is the methodology by which we're able to see magnetism. Not a projection, this isn't a TV screen, this is literally two lenses with a smear of oil ferromagnetic oil between them. Light is just being shown inside. So this is not an LCD. This is nothing other than two optically flat pieces of glass with oil between them. So it's not projecting anything other than shooting light into it. Okay, so there's no feeds here that feeds anything like an LCD screen or whatnot. But these are real photographic images that I took. These are magnets underneath. You can actually see the hypertrochoidal uh, three-dimensional holographic projection of what magnetism truly is. Like simplex fluid dynamics, magnetism can only extrapolate itself out as a reciprocating precessional hyperboloid which must be extrapolated in a hypertrochoidal formation. Now that sounds extremely complex but it's not. It's actually divinely simplex. All of these images are not altered. They're actually cropped, but they're not altered. These are actual, actual images of magnets underneath the ferro cell. Here you can see the hypertrochoidal or the spirograph-like formations. Here is either pole of a magnet. If you're actually able to hold the ferro cell in your hand, you would actually see incredibly dense and deep um, a hologram. This is a broken ring magnet. Here's the broken piece and here's the other broken piece. Here you can see how the field divergent and convergent lines intersect and interfere with each other. Over here you can actually see and um, this is a weak resolution, that's why it's uh, so dim, and these little white spots are just dust spots on the ferro cell. But this is actually what magnetism looks like. Now I'm going to show you a high uh, class image here as I scroll down. Also, these are interference patterns between four different magnets of the Gaussian flux. And uh, here is, uh, of course, the, the center is black because that is the point of uh, magnetic uh, convergence. 
Here you can actually see a, a disc magnet to edge on and the uh, bowl shaped formation. And I'll show you. Here is also uh, a proof of something I knew that had to exist. It is electromagnetic retardation that exists at a ratio of 1 over uh, phi to the power of negative 3. Here we have uh, phi to the power of negative 3 plus 1, so you have 1.2366. 1, 1, and 1, so you have uh, 5.23606. Necessitative electromagnetic retardation, a more frequency of uh, geomagnetic precession that must, under Gaussian flux density, reciprocate itself out as that formula, as I predicted. Um, let me get you down here to a better image. Here we go. Here's a much better one taken uh, by Michael Snyder, who's a professor at uh, Louisville. Yeah, the ferro cell is very clear. Now these, uh, he used multiple colored LEDs. Uh, it doesn't matter if you use multiple, multiple colored LEDs or not. Here you can see his hand actually is holding the magnet behind the, you can see books behind here. Now, like I said, this, this, uh, these uh, cemented lenses are not projecting anything other than the magnetism, the divergent uh, centrifugal magnetism that is being emitted by the magnet. These LEDs are just dumb LEDs like you would use for Christmas decorations, okay? It could be white or it could be multicolored to give you a better sense of depth, but it doesn't matter if they're all white or multicolor, but here you can actually see the hypertrochoidal formation, the spirograph pattern. Some people go, oh, that looks like a, a dream catcher, which of course it does. Here's a closer image you can actually see the hypertrochoidal pattern. It's like simplex fluid dynamics. That's the only way that magnetism can extrapolate itself. Now here are two magnets uh, intersecting. You can see the, uh, the flux density and uh, the point at which these are repelling each other and the fields are diverging away from each other as these uh, like polarity magnets are being pushed together. Um, the hard part people have is actually grasping in their mind what is a reciprocating processional hyperboloid and how does that define magnetism. You know, it's so incredibly simplex and I have a perfect picture of it in my head, but explaining it to people is rather hard. Also you have equal Gaussian flux density on either quote unquote pole of a magnet, but you also have electromagnetic retardation, which is rarefied on the North Pole and compressed on the South. Now here's something you'll find interesting. This is a real picture. You can actually see the used book behind here. This is a, a cube magnet, and here's one pole of the magnet, and here's the other. So you're actually looking at the edge of the magnet. And as you look closely, you can actually see, some people say, oh, well, it looks like a black hole. Of course, no one's ever seen a black hole. But you can actually see, or like a, a toilet bowl, I mean, a, a, an empty void. It's actually bowl-shaped on either side. What you're actually seeing right here is a dielectric inertial plane. You see this bright yellow line right here? This is a dielectric inertial plane of non-Euclidean zero zero uh, divergence, i.e. highest inertia. Um, field dynamics are irreducibly very simple, but humanity doesn't understand them yet. But this is what magnetism truly looks like. It is being painted by light. Now, if you're actually able to hold one of these ferro cells in your hand, you would actually see uh, a hair over, uh, depends on the magnet, a hair over four inches of depth. So imagine the best hologram you've ever seen in the world. Most people have never seen a true art hologram. Imagine the best hologram in the world and multiply that times 100. That is the uh, holographic projection that is emitted through this thin layer is a, a ferrofluidic uh, oil suspension. It is less than one micron thin. That is insanely thin. And to get three to four inches of uh, holographic projection, is absolutely extraordinary. Uh, magnetism truly is a, uh, a two-dimensional uh, projection of the loss of inertia. Not into space because nothing goes, in, no field goes into space. Space is the after effect of uh, the loss of inertia, i.e. the dielectric field. Now this is a very interesting image. What this is is a broken ring magnet. You see the broken piece right here, it's missing. Here is how the field, the Gaussian uh, field uh, density is being painted by light through that micron thin layer on this broken ring magnet. These are real images. These are not computer generated. These are completely real images. Now here's the discovery that I made that I actually predicted would occur. And I went looking for it by using RGB LEDs, and I'll explain that in the next video and what this means. Um, but you're seeing for the first time 
you know, what magnetism truly is. And if your mind is spinning, you know, I'll try to make it even more simple, but this is as simple as I can make it. And uh, it really is ultimately simple, but it is hard to explain, okay?